Hey, Camo Dave here, Camo Dave News Update. This is from RV Travel, serving RVers since 2001, rvtravel.com. Anyway, uh, this came out just today, Sunday, September 12th. No, wait, wait, yeah, that's today, that's today, that's right. Uh, pathetic quality, RV dealers are fed up with what manufacturers are producing. Apparently, you know, the whole state of affairs now with the pandemic, with um, jobs, with um, shortage of workers, the shortage of parts, etc., all the stuff that's going on, uh, it has affected the quality of RVs that are being manufactured in the good old U.S. of A., and people are noticing it. Even newbies are noticing it. Um, uh, the quality of most new recreational vehicles now being produced is being classified as pathetic. It's some of the worst stuff I've seen in 30 years, said one longtime, longtime RV dealer. It's horrendous inside and out, but we have no recourse but to put it on the lot and try to sell it. You take what you can get and you move on. So, you know, they're talking about the fact that it's hard sometimes to buy RVs today because there are shortages. And when you do find RVs out there, they're in pretty, pretty pathetic condition due to their poor manufacturing quality. An RV uh, dealer on the East Coast said that manufacturers are, quote, building them as fast as they can and there just isn't any quality control. Manufacturers are not doing a good job of taking care of their customers. It's gone from bad to worst. Uh, one West Coast dealer says that my greatest fear now is watching the motorized RV industry get toppled. They just don't have the experience to complete a motorhome in northern Indiana anymore. Elkhart, Indiana is where most of the RVs that you buy here in the States are manufactured. And according to industry sources, the labor force there has no eye for quality and no way of teaching it. Uh, wow. Apparently... Uh, that workers there are, uh, there's shortage of workers and uh, there's other jobs available. You know, there is a job, there are too many jobs out there going wanting. So if they, if somebody in Elkhart, Indiana doesn't want to work at the RV plant or whatever, they can go work somewhere else. And they say there's a lot of turnover and a lot of unskilled workers uh, working the lines there in the RV industry there in Elkhart. One manufacturer admits that there is no, he has no idea what his workforce will look like from week to week. Uh, he said on Mondays he never knows who is going to show up. A New England dealer said some manufacturers are only running their plants from three to four days a week due to shortages in both parts and labor. He admits that the quality out there is just terrible. Their ability to retain employees is bad. And you can just tell the guys on the manufacturing lines have been on the job for just a week. Unskilled workers, people that have you know come and gone, uh, shortages of parts, shortages of workers, uh, plants don't have the proper staffing, and they can't get, uh, they and they can't. And here's another problem: they can't do service after the sale. Uh, one dealer said uh, he he's talked to some folks that have just uh, bought an RV. They take their first trip with it, and they come back. To the plant, to the uh, to the dealer there with forty different problems, and then you have to wait weeks and sometimes months to get it fixed because nobody can get the parts. So you not only have crappy products, uh, you, you take them out for one trip and you have a whole lot of issues with it. Bring it back and it's a pain in the butt to get fixed, and they can't get the parts. The industry is saying it's going to make 580,000 rigs by the end of 2021. That sets a new record, in, uh, you know, and then 2022, they may even make 600,000 new factory shipments. But, you know, that is to meet the demand. There is incredible demand, continued robust demand for RVs, uh, and there's very low inventories. But the product you're buying today is uh, apparently pathetic. Uh, this uh, article in... Um, in RVTravel.com says that uh, they're, they're facing the same kind of uh, supply chain and labor issues plaguing most industries uh, right now. The RV industry has overcome these challenges and produced a record number of RVs month after month, but the quality just ain't there. So again, <laughs> you know, uh, beware out there if you're going to, you know, you do if you do find some RV to buy, uh, chances are you're going to have a lot of trouble with it and the quality is very poor right now and uh,
That's just the way it is. So interesting, uh, interesting article there from RVTravel.com. I will put a link in the description below. Hey, let's do some letters here for Sunday, the 12th of September. R.A. Allen says some nomads, uh, some YouTube nomads are so generate, so desperate for YouTube pennies that they make between three and five videos a week. They soon run out of new content and start flapping their jaws just to hear themselves speak, revealing too much personal information before they realize what they've just done. Uh, <clears throat> again, it is getting addicted to the YouTube revenue stream. You know, some of these uh, nomads start out, hey, it's fun to do YouTube videos, and by the way, we can make a little money. And then it becomes, the money becomes more and more of a thing, the YouTube revenue goes way up, and now all of a sudden, everybody's YouTube revenue is starting to plateau and go down. So in, in order to deal with that, you put more and more videos out, and your quality goes down, and you don't have, you know, you don't have the content, so you gotta kind of make up content. And then we see a lot of these nomads that have been traveling are not traveling anymore, or just doing the same little routes over and over again. Uh, and, uh, you know, then what do you do for content? You know, cook, or just continuously and endlessly, you know, buy new vehicles and build them and buy new vehicles and build them and get rid of them and buy new vehicles and build them because you don't have to do much traveling to do that. And for a while, I think you can build a channel on that or keep it going or at least whatever. But eventually you get bored with, okay, he bought and sold another vehicle. Now he's building it up, putting the, you know, that and that, you know, and it's true. It is true. You just see the nomads doing the same things over and over again and less and less travel is, is for a lot of them. <laughs> I was saying how you should be very careful if you're a nomad to reveal your personal information. Jason says, I wish some of these nomads would drop their personal inf information on a job application. <laughs> I did get some comments about my video this morning because I'm talking about uh, nomads not revealing where their locations are. That is a dangerous thing, but I reveal where I am. Hey, I have always done that, okay? I mean, ever, ever since I moved to Morganton, when I was in Springfield, Virginia, when I was in Rehoboth Beach, for, you know, Delaware, when I was in Reston, Virginia, now that I'm in Morganton, North Carolina, you've all known where I am, okay? I don't pretend not to be where I am. You know that, okay? And I've been okay. You know, hey, I, I know how to deal with trolls and uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm not saying that you don't, you know, nobody should ever reveal where they are. But just realize the implications of doing that. And if you do that, take the precautions to protect yourself. You know, lock your doors. You know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, there are ways to protect yourself. And again, the rules of you know personal information revelation don't apply equally to everybody. In my case, I you know, I mean, I'm you know, just me really. You know, so uh, you know, you know where I am, the town I'm in. I go all over this town and show you all the cool businesses and the record shops and stuff and a lot of the touristy stuff in town. So, uh, you know, I, I've never made that a secret, but, uh, you know, you're a hypocrite. You're revealing where you are, but you tell everyone else not to reveal where they are. Well, again, you know, it, it depends on your channel and uh, I'm not telling everyone to keep their location secret, but if you're getting weirdos coming up and bothering you, maybe it's time to make some changes. Uh, Rocky says, my channel has jumped the shark with the amount of wrenches I have that I use in my live streams. Uh, I do have five top wrenches. Okay, what do I got? What do I got? I got uh, Shimei, Sunny Girl. Doxinator. Uh, well, so I'm going to leave somebody out here. Nan Banana and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Noreen. I think that's my five, my five main ones. And once in a while, I'll make a note, somebody else a wrench. Like, you know, if I'm short of wrenches, you know, mo they're moderators, okay? They knock your comments out. And I will do that occasionally in a video, but, you know, temporary. And I do have a few temps. I do have a few temps there. But I do not give people wrenches based on uh, how much money they donate. In fact, some of my biggest donors are not wrenches, but, you know, but, you know, that, that has nothing to do with it. But I just like these people and they're, they're good at looking at comments and whapping the bad ones. Coastal Kev, ranch dressing has made street signs at Aja Acres. Now, how about an official flag? Hey, that's what Fred could do. How about, how about it, Fred? How about a flag for the uh, Panda compound there? You could do quite a lot. Like, people could send in their designs, and you could uh, 
pick one, you know, or, or have a vote. That'd be cool. I was talking about driving past a Queen City appliance here in beautiful Morienton. GB says, I have a big green egg. It is the ultimate cooking experience. Uh, <laughs> the big green egg. Oh, this is not a sponsor, by the way. But I did see one of these big green eggs there at the appliance store here in Morganton, and I noticed it. That looks pretty cool. I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe we could use that as Crotchy's home away from home. We won't turn it on. We don't want to cook Crotchy. No, Dave! But we could use the big green egg. It looks pretty neat. I, 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 I'm sure there are videos on this, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, ask and you shall receive. Lots of bean, baking pizza on the big green egg. Wow. Anyway, lots of videos on the big green egg. I, I'm, I don't know me. I don't know. In my apartment complex, we don't really have an area where you can really do a, a outdoor cooking. But uh, I don't know. I'll have to check into that. Thumbs up man says, I'm really starting to look like a garden troll. <laughs> Revelator Phoenix says, the trolls are the truth tellers. Really? <laughs> People that either love it when I point the camera at me during my, my, my drives, or other people love it when I point the camera at where I'm driving to, you know? Up Before the Enemy says, Dave, uh, I like your car ride videos. I'm like a dog on the front seat. I like to hear you talking, but I'm consumed looking out the window at the scenery. As a hiker myself, I love to see you sometimes take it from the car to the trail. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. People seem to like it when I'm just outside doing a talky-talky. Tommy Knocker says 95% of these nomads have not worked two weeks in the last 20 years. How is a troll supposed to bother a nomad at work when trolls don't work? Come on, man. I said that. No, I, there are some YouTubers that do have jobs, and sometimes trolls will bother the employers. Hey, I really do think that YouTube can be a jobby poo. It, it does, you know, some of these, um, can you say, can you honestly say that Van City Van Life Chrome is not a hard worker? I mean, he does bust his butt producing that channel. A lot of work goes into his channel. And uh, you gotta say that, you know, and some of these nomads do work mighty hard producing their channels on YouTube. And, you know, just cause you're not getting paid by the man, you know, you're getting paid, you're doing your own work, you're working for yourself, uh, you know, that is, you know, but it is true, I think a lot of nomads do work. Some don't, <laughs> some just kind of phone it in, but that's true in uh, the real work-a-day world, right? Daniel says, most nomads are really the bottom of YouTube and they are feeling the pressure of running out of interesting content. I still find Casey Roman's rants to be entertaining and she isn't traveling anymore, but she is trying to buy an RV to work out of. That is right. Uh, I, you know, again, Casey Roman is one of the many um, former nomads, shall we say, that I just, they have such a cult of personality that I enjoy just listening to them and hearing what they have to say. And there are some nomads that are like that, that just talk, talk, talk. I think Rob is like that, Little House Off Grid. He's a fascinating person, whether you like him or not. He, you know, he does have a lot of interesting things to say, and he says it in a fascinating way. And his videos are pretty much talky talky, uh, you know, and he isn't traveling much anymore, but I do find him fascinating. I find Casey fascinating and uh, some nomads just, you know, you know, they can stop traveling, but they're interesting. And, and uh, as they say, ready? <clears throat> Oddly compelling. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, the 12th of September 2021 vlog.